I told you to plan. Now, we've been here two hours. You had a chance to have your cup of, two cups of coffee. I've seen you walk on the hokey pokey. Don't you had your naps. You can answer all your emails. I want to smell that. So we're ready to go and pay attention. We've got a lot of ground to cover. So let's get started. Right. 
Now you, you see, when you're navigating through pathways, you have to go all the way over to the right to see this little button over here in order to proceed to the next slide. So I like to think of the expression maximize to minimize. When you're going through pathways, you have to maximize your browser in order to minimize the pain of saying, where is that right arrow? I can't proceed unless I find that right arrow. So maximize to minimize the pain of being lost. So you click here, and you've done the text. Now it's time for these videos. Now when we're all going through the, the competent communication manual, you just kind of fall asleep, kind of reading it, it's just prose. But here, it's interactive. It comes alive. You get people on this little video. It's just a, a four-minute video, and it gives you reassurance. People from all walks of life say, oh, I did my icebreaker. It's nothing to fear. And it's, really, it's really comforting to someone who's just going through their icebreaker for the first time. So then, we move on. Now, it's time to do your speech, and we're all familiar. Each speech has an evaluation. And you're wondering, where do I get, I don't have a manual, where do I get my evaluation? So here, on this page, is where you press evaluation resource to print out your evaluation form. And so you can print out the evaluation form and bring it to your meeting and give it to your evaluator, like I did. I gave my evaluation form today to Anshi, and she's evaluating my speech. So that's what you have to do. And so you're wondering, well, what do I do, what do, I do after with the evaluation form? Do I give it to my VPE for them to sign off? No, you don't have to do anything with it. It's for you. The evaluation is for you. So unlike the traditional program, we had to have the VPEs look at it and sign. No, you just keep it. So now that you've given your speech and you've had your evaluation, the next step is to take your assess your skills after program. You, you take this and you take that little survey. Now this is crucial because people say, well I've done my icebreaker, why haven't I received any credit for it? You hear that all the time. They say, well, did you take your assess your skills after? And they say, no, what's that? <laughs> so you have to take it. It takes two seconds. You just do it, you log on, answer a few questions, and you get this next screen comes up. Congratulations, you've completed a project. And now they're ready to go on. Now, as I mentioned at the start, there are three parts to level one. And we move on. Project number two, evaluation and feedback. So we all remember in the traditional program, you give one speech, it's one project, one speech, one project. But Pathways is a little more involved. This project has three parts. You give a speech, you get evaluated on that speech, you incorporate that feedback into your next speech, and then, look at this, you evaluate in another member's speech. Now that's something that's new in Pathways. After giving only three speeches, you're ready to evaluate another member's speech. In the traditional, you had to do a lot more speeches before you reach that level. So, we'll get a little bit more involved in this project. So we go on to the next. And you see a different way of navigating through the text. It gives you excellent information on how to provide feedback. And here the navigation buttons are on the middle of the page rather than the end. So you have to go through all these little buttons. You see the little buttons at the top. All these little buttons keep going there, keep clicking, 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 and then if your browser is maximized, you'll see the arrow on the right. Another way that you navigate through this level is by clicking on the items on the left, and then things appear on the right. So there are all different ways of navigating. It keeps you invigorated and awake rather than just leafing through the, the manuals and the traditional system. So, we give you great suggestions on how to distinguish between advice and feedback so that you become a better evaluator. And then we move on. Moving on is 
is the next part of the project. So I mentioned that there were three parts to level two, to the second project. Once you've completed that, only then are you able to do the little evaluation part of the of the project, where you actually take the after after assessment. So you have to wait until you've completed all three parts of that second project in order to get credit for it. Then, and only then, are you ready to move on to how to research a topic, which is the third part of the first level. And what that is, it's basically like Project 7 in the old Competent Communicator Manual. Basically the same thing, but again, as we walk through this, you can see that you have to have interactive navigation, gives you great advice as we move on to the next slide. You'll see all these, you take a little quiz, they've got quizzes now to keep you alert. You know, it says what, what are the best sources? Are these good sources? Is Wikipedia a good source? Are message boards a good source? Of course not. So it gives you more up-to-date information that is more useful. So once again, once you've completed your speech, you've been evaluated, and it's time to go home and fill out that little questionnaire, how well have you progressed, and then you'll be ready to complete level three. So we'll go on to the next slide. So you see, there is your curriculum. You've done the icebreaker. You've done all three parts of the evaluation module. You've done researching and presenting. So what's left? left? The only one thing that's left to do to complete level one is to submit your completion. So to do that, you click on activate. And once you do that, what will happen is an email will be sent out to base camp managers, the secretary, the VPE, and the club president will all receive it. A nice little email saying, a member of your club has submitted a, a level completion request. It's your duty to accept or reject it. And once we get that, we do our little magic in base camp behind the scenes, and the base camp manager congratulates the member for completing level one, and when we submit the level completion, they are now ready to move on to level two. So we move, we move on, we've already gone over that, so we move on further. So then, we're on to level two. So this morning we've already gone over in great detail how to work through level one and what it encompasses. Now there's a common misconception among Toastmasters that all five levels are exactly the same. You give your icebreaker, then you give two speeches, you evaluate someone, and you do a research project, that they're all the same. Just completed five times. Is that correct? No! Nothing could be further than the truth. Nothing could be further from the truth on that. Each level is different. It's, it increases in complexity as you move on. So the second one, is level two, you have different things involved, like you have mentoring, cross-cultural communication, identifying leadership and communication skills. And we've had some successful speeches in my, my club on level two, because it has, you take a survey and you find out what your communication skills are or what your leadership style is, and after some of the, our members have given those speeches, they're saying, oh, I want to know what my communication style is. How do I take that quiz? How do I take that survey? I said, well, you have to complete level one before you can do that. And that excites people about getting started. So, now, now the next one is level three. Okay, now, we're on to level three. Now level three is where all the paths start to differentiate among the different styles of paths. Up to level one and level two are basically the same throughout all the different paths. Level two has some minor differences, but level three is where it starts getting different. So I can't really generalize about what you'll find in level three, but just as 
suffice it to say that with level three, you have to do one leadership project, or if you're doing presentation mastery, a, a specialized speech, and you get a series of electives. So this is one of the best things about Pathways, is that you can customize your learning experience the way you want to do it, what's important to you. They give you maybe like a dozen different electives from which to choose. And I just highlighted a few. One of them is just know your sense of humor, focus on the positive, connect with storytelling, deliver social speeches, all kinds of things, all kinds of electives. And just whatever one appeals to you, you just go through. You have to do two of them, plus the leadership project, and then you're ready to move on to level four. So we move on. Level four, you have the project that you have to do. It's a more involved leadership project. And you have to select one of the electives. Now, presentation mastery, I had to practice preparing to speak in front of a hostile audience. Which, I don't know, it was good practice because at work I have to prepare a presentation in front of a hostile audience every morning. In my, in my morning <laughs> so that's an excellent practice for me, so that, that's why I highly recommend that project. And we actually went through that in my club, and you know, I came over here, it was excellent at giving me, you know, heckling me throughout my speech. And, you know, we had a fun time with it, but it's really worth it. So then once you've done your project, your leadership project, it's time to get, you have to choose another big elective. Now, the nice thing about level four in Pathways is that it brings us forward into the 21st century. Unlike the traditional program, which was stuck in the 70s technology and all had all the old traditional things to do, here we have 21st century activities. Write a compelling blog. 40 years ago, the word blog didn't even exist. Manage online meetings. You know, and I, you know, I haven't done that one yet, but I imagine that's when you play online bingo. You know, the first, the first one is, you know, is, is everyone logged on here? Oh, I, I hear animal noises in the background. Is that your dog? So that's how you conduct an online meeting because you have to make sure everyone's there and... Oh, my, my browser just went off. Bingo, you got that one. <laughs> Managing difficult audience, writing compelling blog, build a social media presence. That, that's the one that I selected when I did level four. I really learned quite a bit from that because I, had, I was serving as a VPPR and then I opened up pages for our club, club for for Twitter and, and and Facebook, and so we had all these different venues. So that was that was a valuable experience. One thing that you'll notice about some of these projects as you go on, some of these projects can take a long time to do. Like building a social media presence took me several months to do and maintain. So what happens is is that you really can't rush through the Pathways program. It'll take a lot of time, a lot of time, and yet some of these projects take can take four to six months. So you have to keep that in mind. So what happens, to get credit for it, you just have to give a five-minute speech on how the project went. So that's typical for a lot of these projects. What you get credit for is a five-minute speech explaining all the hard work you did the last four to six months. So that's why you really can't rush through pathways. When people ask, how long does it take to get through a path? It could take several months. You can't really rush through it. It's not something that you just, you know, one after another you do. So then you move on to level five. This is basically the same one on all the paths. You lead in a volunteer organization and you get evaluated on how well you lead, reflect on your path, and prepare to speak professionally, which is a 20-minute speech. So once you've done all that, then, and only then, if you completed a path. So today, we've gone through quite a bit of information, and all that information is available on the d14toastmasters.org 
website, you click on pathways, and you've got a wonderful overview. You know, we've gone over a lot this morning, and I don't expect you to remember it all, so you go there, and that is where you find all this information. So I encourage you to go back to your clubs, and encourage them to continue with pathways. Yes, ma'am. Basecamp managers. Yeah, yeah, yeah.